Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching and Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel. Welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you seasoned veterans of what we do around here. What we do around here is bring about conversations of a psychological, mental health, emotional health paradigm. We do that as often as we can. This is the uh, Gene Okerlund um, basically overseeing Jack Tunney and his in-ring contract signing between... Um, Obviously, Bret Hart and Yoko Zuna, Mr. Fuji, and uh, for the title of WrestleMania 9, followed by the Hart and Yoko are face to face. Basically, Hart signs the contract. Yoko takes a shot at him, and he uh, hits him with a couple of bonsai drops, making sure he's not 100% for the match. Yoko then does this by shoving the edge of the table into Bret's uh, ribcage. And then hits those bonsai drops we talked about. Mr. Perfect and the Brooklyn Brawler uh, go at it. Two minutes, 21 seconds. And Lex Luger cuts an insert promo during that time period about their WrestleMania 9 match. Obviously, WrestleMania 9, pretty big deal. Henning goes up and takes the slam off the top, the inverted neck snap, and ultimately the perfect plex along the way. Really basic maneuver, a highlight for Andre the Giant being the first inductee into the Hall of Fame. Pretty big deal at the time. Doink the Clown coming out next as a member of the one here. Doink, of course, taking on Crush at WrestleMania 9 in a, in a week's time. WrestleMania 9, of course, the, um, you know, kind of a weak WrestleMania. Some people say it's the second worst ever Behind WrestleMania 2, I definitely think anything in the last several years has been worse than any of that, but that's just personal preference stuff. Doink the Clown defeating Tom Jones via submission with the stump puller. Um, super basic match here. Doink, of course, is still Matt Bourne at this time period. I think Bourne running the gimmick through maybe the at least SummerSlam 93, so Doink is here for about a year in that particular manner, and ultimately, uh, Doink, uh, you know, the heel Doink, which is probably the better Doink, um, you know, punch kick, back suplex, and ultimately the stump puller from Doink. Uh, Jones is not exactly a guy who can do a lot with. Also, a modified power bomb by uh, one of those individuals known as Doink, and uh, Jim Duggan, Cutting a promo from a woodlot or some sort of weird uh, location. Then we see Razor Ramon, a.k.a. Scott Hall, talking about uh, not respecting Bob Backlund. The collegiate star, Mr. College Man, he calls him the former world champion, but not Machismo. Steiner Brothers cutting a promo on the upcoming match they have with none other than the... Uh, uh, have a, the head shrinkers going into things, and obviously that is a super basic um, promo there. The head, the uh, Steiner brothers, obviously getting ready for their first run of the tag team championships in June, and uh, obviously the Bret Hart angle being the big deal here by any stretch of the imagination, as it were. And uh, Jack Tunney basically out here saying that he is a guy that wants to uh, uh, hold up law and order, but obviously the, the damage done by none other than the uh, Bret Hart run. Anyway, we continue to go back to the nature of things and ultimately uh, uh, getting things back together here. Um, and... Not exactly where we want to be as far as that's concerned. Um, Bam Bam Bigelow up next with an enhancement match here. Bigelow, I believe, facing off against young Joey Mags. Mags not exactly a guy that you can really do a lot with at the time, but um, Bam Bam Bigelow defeating Joey Mags 313, headbutt off the top during the match. Kamala and Slick cut an insert promo Kamala facing Bigelow at WrestleMania 9, which never happens. Um, you know, Bigelow, big body slams, hurting the man across the ring, super basic maneuvers, but at the same time, all things that Bigelow is capable of doing, cartwheel along the way, Bigelow as the heel here, uh, having his best match at the summer, uh, or the king of the ring, start, I guess start of summer, right? Uh, a couple 
weeks before summer begins, big low in control here. And then we move to the run of uh, nature of things and ultimately getting things going in a positive direction. Uh, um, ultimately, you know, Ted DiBiase and IRS talking about their match with uh, the mega maniacs, Hogan and Beefcake, and promising to take Beefcake's head off. Beefcake, of course, uh, managing the titanium plate. Hogan thinking that uh, DiBiase and friends is, under, uh, is underestimating them. Giant Gonzalez also up next, basically saying that he's going to crush The Undertaker and eliminate The Undertaker. Uh, Gonzalez being next to Harvey Whippleman helps because Whippleman is super small by every stretch of the imagination and a guy who they kind of need in that uh, smaller role to excise the size of Giant Gonzalez. Then we move to nature of uh, Kamala or the, the, the um, Steiner brothers, Rick and Scott. Rick and Scott, of course, coming out and uh, some hard shots there. Glenn Ruth and uh, his tag team partner along the way. 327 for this particular match. Uh, Ruth's tag team partner, Ruth, Glenn, Glenn Ruth, uh, uh, originally one of the, or later one of the head shrinkers, or I'm sorry, one of the head bangers, not the head shrinkers, there on WrestleMania 9. Uh, Dale Wolf, otherwise known as Dusty Wolf, is the other partner there. Uh, hits a bulldog off the top, uh, does Rick Steiner. And the head shrinkers cut a promo during the match. Ultimately, the Steiners hit a couple of suplexes of Frankensteiner and that top rope bulldog giving them the victory. We will move forward right after this. <laughs> 